All right, y'all. So the next couple exercises, what they're going to do, they're going to give us a zero for a polynomial, and they want us to find the other zeros. So what we'll do, we'll do synthetic division until we can get it down to a degree two polynomial. Once we got a degree two polynomial, we'll get the last two zeros by doing quadratic formula. So y'all, let's play with one of these. And this will be like number 12. That's where y'all should be able to pick up at. So they'll say uh, the polynomial has the given zero. And then find the other zeros. All right, so my polynomial is f of x equals x to the third plus 3x squared minus 5x minus 15. And then the zero they're giving me is negative 3. <coughs> So since this is a degree three, we only got to do synthetic division once, and then we'll use the quotient, remember, which will be a degree less. So since the quotient will be a degree two, we can use those three numbers with the quadratic formula. Now, y'all, so let's see. Nothing's missing. I got my X3 term, X squared term, X term, and my number. So I'm going to write out my coefficients. 1, 3, negative 5, and negative 15. All right, draw my box. So the first number they gave me as a 0 was negative 3. So I'm going to put negative 3 in for my C. Now, here's the thing. Since they told me negative 3 was a 0, we got to get a 0 remainder on this. Now, what we'll do is these three numbers that we get for our quotient, that's going to be A, B, C when we do the quadratic formula to get the other two zeros, okay? But we got to divide this 0 out to get that quotient. All right, y'all, so here we go. The 1 comes down. 1 times negative 3 is negative 3. 3 plus negative 3, give me 0. All right, 0 times negative 3 is 0. Negative 5 plus 0 is negative 5. And then that negative 5 times negative 3 is a positive 15. And there's our 0 remainder. But we knew we'd get a 0 remainder on it, okay? So, since they gave me this first zero, I got to find the other two. So, these are the coefficients of the new polynomial, remember, and they started one degree less than the original. So, this is like 1x squared plus 0x minus 5. Okay, so there's the new polynomial. I don't have to write the x since it had a zero in front of it, okay? So this is the, um, let me let one in real quick. So this is the polynomial, and since there's no x term on that, I'm going to set that equal to zero. And I'm going to solve this by doing the square root instead of the quadratic formula because that's a little bit easier. So, y'all, to do the square root on this, I'm going to add 5 to both sides. That'll give me x squared over here equals a positive 5. And then square root both sides. Now, remember, that's a number, so you got to use your plus or minus square root of 5. So the square root of x squared, those cancel giving me my x. 
That's going to equal, well, y'all, in the real world, I can't take the square root of five because that's going to be a never-ending decimal. So we'll leave that as a plus or minus square root of five. So in the uh, answer blank, they'll say the other zeros are blank. And we'll put in, you can either use a plus or minus, or you can do a square root of five comma negative square root of five. But that will let you use the plus or minus on it. Now, what you got to watch out for, you don't put in the negative three as an answer because they gave us that zero, okay? All right, so there was two of those, and I'm going to do both of these. So the same thing. Um, for the following polynomial, one zero was given. Find the remaining zeros. All right, so I'm going to pull that down a little bit. So let's see, on this one, they're giving me P of X equals X to the fourth plus 16X squared minus 225. Now, the zero they're giving me, they're saying that 5 by is a zero so here's the thing that's an x to the four so we should have four zeros on that they're giving us one so that means we got to do synthetic division at least twice before we can solve the other two doing the square root or the quadratic formula okay so you always got to get it down uh to an x squared term before you can do the other two zeros, okay? Now notice, this one has the x4 term. It's missing the x3, so we'll put a zero for it. It's got the x squared term. It's missing the x, so I'll put a zero for it, and then I got my number at the end. So your coefficients have to be a one, zero, 16, 0, and a negative 225. All right, so the first C they gave me was a 5i. So let me let a few in real quick. All right, so what I say, 5i was the first zero we got to try. Now, remember, when we're playing with the i stuff, if I get an i squared, that equals negative 1, okay? So that'll change the sign of whatever number's in front of it. All right, y'all, so here we go. Bring down to 1. 1 times 5i is 5i. 0 plus 5i is 5i. So watch this, 5i times 5i is 25i squared. But since i squared equals negative 1, that's going to make that a negative 25. All right, then we got negative 25 plus 16, which is a negative 9. Negative 9 times 5i is a negative 45i. So notice, I don't change the sign when it's just an i. It was just when we multiplied the 5i times 5i, okay? All right, y'all, 0 and negative 45i. Give me a negative 45i. Now, this negative 45i times 5i is a negative 225i squared 
But remember, I squared makes that into a positive 225. And when we add them up, we get our remainder of zero. So remember, I still got an X cubed here because I got four numbers. So this would be like 1X cubed plus 5IX squared minus 9X minus 45I. So I still got four terms. So I got to do synthetic division again before I solve for the last two zeros. So y'all going to use these four numbers. So I got a 1, 5i, negative 9, and a negative 45i. And how did you get the x cubed again? Um, so since my original polynomial started out as the x to the fourth, once I divide out one of my zeros, these are the coefficients of the new polynomial, and they always start one degree less than the original. Okay, I remember now. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Um, But y'all, I need a zero that I can try. They gave me 5i, and I divided it out and got what was left. So what is the next zero I should try? And this will be something we learned last week. So y'all, what y'all got to remember, if 5i is a zero, then what also must be a zero? Negative 5i. Negative 5i. Good job. Because remember, those always come in conjugate pairs. So I know when I um, put my answer for the remaining zeros, it'll start with that negative 5i and then whatever two I get left from these three coefficients, okay? All right, y'all. So bring the one down. One times negative 5i is a negative 5i. 5i and negative 5i give me a zero. 0 times negative 5i is 0. Negative 9 plus 0 is negative 9. And y'all, this negative 9 times negative 5i makes a positive 45i, which, when you add them together, give you a 0 remainder. So the first of my other zeros is 5i. I mean negative 5i. So remember, these coefficients would start one degree less than the x to the third because that's what I was dividing out to zero from. So this would be like 1x squared plus 0x minus 9. So I'm going to set this equal to zero and get my last two zeros, okay? So remember, X to the 4 means 4 total. They gave us the 5i. <coughs> so we're going to find the rest. So y'all, this here, since we don't have an x term, I'm going to add 9 and do square roots. All right, so that's going to leave my x squared over here. That's going to equal a positive 9. So now I'm going to do square roots to both sides. So that'll be a plus or minus square root of 9. So y'all, the x squared, the radical and the exponent cancel, leaving our x. And this will be, what, a plus or minus square root of 9, which is 3. So for your answer, the remaining zeros... We would have our negative 5i. And then 3 and negative 3. Okay, so just remember on 12 and 13, you are got to do synthetic division until you can get it down to these three numbers.
All righty, so the next thing they're going to show us is a way to find all the possible zeros when they don't give you a zero. Now, I'm going to show you how to do these. Uh, these will be like uh, 14 and 15. I'll show you how to get all the possible zeros. But when I actually do one of these, I'm going to graph them because this stuff is old school before graphing came out on the calculators. Um, but this is how you would have done it if you didn't have a graphing calculator, okay? So, and this is a way to find all possible numbers that could be a zero of these polynomials, okay? So these will say find all possible rational zeros. Now, rational zeros means it's not those imaginary ones and the ones in the radicals. This tells us how to find all the ones that are fractions or whole numbers or integers. So let me show you what. These ain't bad, it's just tedious. So we used to have to do this on these things, and it was a little bit tedious here. Um, but they're giving me 15x to the third minus 34x squared plus 48x minus 14. So what we had to do back in the day to find all the possible rational zeros, so the possible rational zeros, we had to take factors of the last number and divide them by all the factors of the first number. So I take all the factors of 14 and divide all them factors by all the factors of the 15. So we're gonna have a lot of possible combinations. So factors of 14. So, y'all, all the factors of 14 would be 1, 2, 7, and 14. So, 1 times 14, 2 times 7. Now, the first number is 15. So, I need all the factors of 15. So, let's see. That'll be 1, 3, 5, and 15. So these are all the possible factors of 15. Now, I'm going to take every one of these factors and divide by all four of these factors, okay? So I'm going to start with the 1. Now, these can all be plus or minus. So I'm going to use a plus or minus. So the first factor of the last number that I'm going to start with is 1. So since I got one, two, three, four factors here, I'm going to do this four times. So that'll take care of my one being divided by all four of these factors. So one over one is the first combination. One over three is the second. One over five is the third. And then 1 over 15. Now, the only thing they'll do to this is this 1 over 1 will divide. So that one, I could actually turn into a plus or minus 1. So that'll actually equal plus or minus 1 there, okay? So I got four combinations just out of having a 1 on top. One, plus or minus 1 plus or minus one-third, plus or minus one-fifth, 
plus or minus one fifteenth. So now I do the two. I got plus or minus two, plus or minus two. So I still got four factors I got to divide that by. All right, so I take the two, divide by one. Take the two, divide by three. Take the two, divide by five. And then take the two, divide by 15. And once again, this two over one will simplify to a plus or minus two. So y'all look at that. Remember, these are plus or minus. So I've already got two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16 numbers that could be possible zeros, and I've only halfway through. So back in the day, we would have to start with these numbers and do synthetic division, praying we got a zero remainder. Because if you didn't get a zero remainder, you had to try the next one, okay? All right, so let's keep going. We got a seven here. So plus or minus seven, plus or minus seven. Got to do this four times again. So divide by the one, divide by the three, divide by the five, and then divide by the 15. And y'all, if you notice what, this one will reduce to a plus or minus seven. Well, that just added two, four, six, eight more. So we're up to 24 possible zeros. And I still got my last number to go, which was my 14. So plus or minus 14. And really, I don't know why we do this method anymore since we do have graphing calculators, but I guess it's for people that don't have a graphing calculator. They can still do this stuff in the old school method. Okay, so. All right, take all these numbers and divide by 1. 14 divided by 3. 14 divided by 5. And then 14 divided by 15. And once again, this one will reduce to a plus or minus 14. So back in the day when they didn't give you any zeros and you had to find them all on your own, we had to do this. So me, I would probably start with the whole numbers, try one first and then negative one, praying for a zero remainder, then start with my two negative two. Once I got a zero remainder and I found one of the zeros, then I could do my synthetic division, okay? And then uh, since this one had three zeros, this would have gave me one of them. I could have done the quadratic formula or the square roots to get my last zeros. So... Let me show you a problem when they started, uh, so at number 16, where you actually got to sort of know this kind of stuff, but I'm not going to do the zeros by this method. I'm going to show you how I would graph them and get my zeros that way, okay? A lot easier now. All right, y'all, so let's... Uh, Work a problem. This would be like number 16. They want us to find the rational zeros and then the other zeros of the polynomial. All right, so I got f of x equals x to the third minus 133x plus 132. Now, after that, they say then 
factor into linear factors. So that's just sort of like we did when we worked in reverse. They just want me to put them in parentheses, okay? So, y'all, the easiest way to do this, because uh, let's see, 132, there's a lot of factors of that number. So you would have to possibly do synthetic division a lot of times. But now, if we can graph this and we can find our x-intercepts, the x-intercepts, or our zeros. So let's share our calculator and punch in that polynomial and see if we can find any x-intercepts. Because if I can at least get one, then I know I can get the last two zeros by doing the quadratic formula or the square root. So I'm going to switch to my calculator, go to y equals, and I'm going to put in my x to the third. All right, arrow down, minus 133x. Plus 132. All right, so two ways to find the x-intercepts. We can graph it, or we could look at the table. Remember, if you look on the table, if it's an x-intercept, it's going to have a zero for the y. So I'm going to see the graph first. So, y'all, I can at least tell there's one zero right there where that's crossing that line. So let me, and it looks like it's at what, about a one for me. So watch this. I'm going to hit second graph and go to the table. And let me go up to where that, look, right there at one, it equaled zero. So we at least have one zero where X is one. So I am now going to go back and find the other two. So I'm going to try my first zero is one for sure. So since one is a zero, I'm going to do synthetic division and get my three numbers I need for my quadratic formula. Or you can solve them by factoring, or you can solve them by square roots. So y'all, we need our coefficients. Now notice, I'm missing the x squared term, so I'll put a zero there for it. So I got a one for my x to the third, zero for my x squared term, negative 133 for the x term, and then 132 for my number. Now, if I'm right and one's a zero, then I better get a zero remainder here, okay? All right, y'all, so here we go. We're going to bring down to one. One times one is one. Zero plus one is one. One times one is one. Negative 133 and 1 give me a negative 132. And then negative 132 times 1 gives me a negative 132. And y'all, 132 minus 132 gives us a zero remainder. So let's see what we got. We got an x squared plus 1x minus 132. All right, so let's set that equal to zero. So we do know that one of the zeros is one. So this, you can square root it, but I can't do that on this one because I got the x term. So we either got to factor this or do the quadratic formula. So, y'all, we know how to do the quad formula, so I'm going to see if this one will actually factor. So, you got an x squared in the front. That means an x and an x. Now, 
Now, I will tell you another trick. Um, you can graph that and see if you can find where it's crossing the x-axis. <clears throat> All right, when you factor, if this last number is negative, when that last factor is negative, you got to have unlike signs. Okay? So, and if the last one was positive, they'd both be the same as the middle number. But the last one is negative, so we got unlike factors. Now, I need factors of 132. So, y'all, we're weak at factors a lot of times. So, let me show you what I do to find factors of 132. I'm going to use the calculator. So, let me share the calculator. I'm going to go to y equals and clear this out. If you want factors of 132 on the calculator, you'll punch in 132 divided by x. So what it's going to do is it's going to show me all the factors as the x goes from 0, 1, 2. Remember, if it's a factor, I won't get a decimal answer on these, okay? So I'm going to go to the table. So by hitting second graph... And uh, see, zero is not a factor because you get an error. But look at that. One and 132 are factors. So I'm going to write these down. One and 132. Two and 66. Three and 44. Four and 33. All right, five is not a factor. Six and 22. Seven is not a factor. Eight is not a factor. Nine is not a factor. Ten is not a factor. Eleven and twelve. And then they start going downhill. There's twelve and eleven. Uh, there's my twenty-two and six. So they would all. I've got all the factors now because usually when you got two right next to get together, you're done. So. Take the number you want to find the factors of, divide by X, and then use the table to find all the factors. So, these are the factors of 132. So, here's the thing on this one. Y'all watch what I'm doing because this negative tells me two things. It told me that these signs have unlike numbers. I mean, these factors have unlike signs. It also tells me to find factors of 132 that subtract to get a 1. Your numbers either got to add or subtract to get to the middle number. Since mine's negative, mine got to subtract to get to that 1. Well, y'all, there's only one set of factors over here that will subtract and give you a 1. That's going to be 12 and 11. Now, here's the thing. The larger factor always has the same sign as the middle number. So since 12 is larger, it'll be positive, and 11 will be negative. So y'all look at this. 12 minus 11 equals 1 like the middle. 12 times negative 11 equals negative 132. Okay? So... The last two zeros, I'm going to set each of them parentheses equal to zero now. Solve them for x by subtracting 12 on the first one. And then adding 11 on the second one. So now, these are all rational zeros. One negative 12 and 1, they're all rational zeros because they don't have radicals and they ain't got imaginary with them. So the rational zeros would be 1, um, whoops, that's an 11 there, my bad. 0 plus 11 is 11, right? <laughs> so Z, uh, 1, 11, and negative 12. 
So these would be rational zeros. Now, other zeros, like I said, would be the imaginary stuff and the radical stuff. And I think the next one I do has that on it. Now then it says factorization into linear factors. So on that part, we're just putting everything in parentheses. So if the zeros are positive, the factor will be negative. Negative. And since this zero was negative, its linear factor will be positive. They just want you to realize that the factors have opposite signs than the zeros, okay? Righty, so y'all, that was the x to the third. We got our three zeros that were all rational, and then we put them into linear factors. So I'm going to do another one that has four zeros on it, okay? So this one will be like 18. Um, 17 had three zeros just like that one, okay? So for 18, they're giving us f of x equals x to the fourth minus 7x to the third minus 35x squared minus 41x minus 14. See y'all, same thing, we're going to find four zeros on this one and then write them as linear factors. So let's see if we're missing anything first. So I got my 1x to the fourth, negative 7x to the third, negative 35, negative 41, and then my negative 14. So nothing was missing on this one. So I'm going to go graph this again instead of trying to look through 10, 15 possibilities with synthetic division. I'm going to go graph this to see where this is crossing the x-axis. All right, you also go to y equals. I'm going to clear this out. So I had x to the fourth. All right, arrow down. Minus 7x to the third. Arrow down. Minus 35x squared. Minus 41x. Minus 14. All right, so I'm going to graph that and see if I can tell where this is crossing the x-axis. Oh, and y'all, I can see, looks like one, two, three spots there, but I can't tell the numbers, so I'm going to go to my table by hitting second graph. And let me go, those were up on the other end, so let's go up that way. All right, there's a zero for negative one. So I'm going to try negative one. Oh, look at that. There's a zero at negative two. And then these numbers get really big. So I do have two numbers, negative one and negative two. I'm going to try them as my zeros. So let's go back to our paper. So I'm going to try these two numbers with my synthetic division. Because remember, I got to do this one twice before I can do my quadratic stuff, okay? Because this one will have four zeros. I can get the last two doing the quadratic stuff, but I got to get two of these divided out. So I'm going to start with negative one, divide it out, and then I'm going to divide out that negative two. Okay? So here we go. Bring the one down. One times negative one is negative one. Negative seven, negative one, give me negative eight. 
negative 8 times negative 1 is positive 8. Oh, y'all, let's see. Negative 35 plus 8 is negative 27. Negative 27 times negative 1 is a positive 27. Negative 41, positive 27. Give me a negative 14. And y'all, this is what we wanted. Negative 14 times negative 1 is a positive 14, which gives me a zero remainder. So we definitely know that negative 1 is a zero now. So now we got to take these four numbers. Because remember, this is now a 1x to the third. 8x squared, 27x, minus 14. So I'm going to use them four numbers. And do synthetic division again. And I'm going to try my second number, which was negative 2. All right. Spin this around and pray for a zero here. So y'all bring the 1 down. 1 times negative 2 is negative 2. Negative 8, negative 2, give me a negative 10. Negative 10 times negative 2 is what, a positive 20. Negative 27 and 20, give me negative 7. And then finally, negative 7 times negative 2 is what I needed, a positive 14, which gives me a zero remainder. So negative 1 and negative 2 are both rational zeros. So let's see what we get out of this. So remember, this is like 1x squared minus 10x minus 7. So I'm going to set that equal to zero. Now, I'm just going to check and see if it factors. If this was going to factor, I'd have to find factors of 7 that subtracted to get a 10. Well, 7's only got 7 and 1 as its factors, and that's not going to subtract and give me 10. So this one does not factor, so we got to do the quadratic formula. So, y'all, A is 1. Well, A, B, and C are going to be them three numbers, right? Negative 10 and negative 7. So, we're going to plug them into our quadratic formula. So, negative B, which will be a negative, negative 10, plus or minus square root. Well, B squared will be negative 10 squared. Minus 4 times A, which is 1, and C, which is negative 7. All that over, 2 times A, which is 1. All right, so now we're just going to simplify this as far as we can go. Negative, negative 10 makes that a positive 10, plus or minus. Negative 10 times negative 10 is 100. And remember, this side all gets multiplied. So negative 4 times 1 is negative 4 times negative 7 is a positive 28. All that over, 2 times 1, which is 2. All right, y'all, so let's see what we're doing. Uh, we can add under here, so bring this down. 10 plus or minus. All right, 100 plus 28 is 128 all over 2. So now we got to try to simplify that square root of 128. So on the side... I'm going to simplify the square root of 128. Now, remember, you're looking for factors like 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, 49, 64, 
81, 100. Um, that's probably as big as I need to go on this. But there is a factor of 128 sitting over here. And the largest factor of 128 is going to be that 64. So I would make this a 64 and a 2. So you always want to find the largest number. 4 would have went into that, but 4 wasn't my largest number. And I would have still had a perfect square under the radical. So always go for the largest number. So watch this. Square root of 64 is 8. And then bring down your square root of 2. So I'm going to replace that with that now. So I got 10 plus or minus 8 square root of 2 all over 2. All right, y'all. So my last step, these two numbers on the outside will both divide by 2. So you got to take the 10 divided by 2, make that a 5 plus or minus. 8 divided by 2 gives me 4. And then my square root of 2. So 5 plus 4 square root of 2. 5 minus 4 square root of 2. These are not rational zeros. So for the answer, rational zeros, those were my negative 1 and negative 2. Then it'll say other zeros. Well, my other zeros are going to be 5 plus or minus 4 square root of 2. Now, you can do this as 5 plus 4 square root of 2, comma, 5 minus 4 square root of 2. It'll take that either way. Now, for the linear factors... Let's say I had four zeros, so I'm going to need four sets of parentheses. So since that was a negative one, I get x plus one. Negative two, this will be x plus two. Now these ones, that five's positive, so this will be x minus five plus 4 square root of 2, and then it'll be x minus 5 minus 4 square root of 2. So the only thing that's uh, the 5 has to change sign and be negative, and then we're changing the signs of both of those, but you're still going to get 1 plus and 1 minus. So, y'all, this one's hard to see, but that's x minus 5 plus 4 square root of 2 for that one. And then that was x minus 5 minus 4 square root of 2 for the last one. So y'all, those uh, finding zeros gets tricky, but they want you to realize what rational zeros are and what the other zeros will look like, okay? And then they still want you to remember that the zeros and the factors always have opposite signs. All righty, so that is 8.4. So I'm going to get into 5.1 support next. Um, it's more practice doing factoring. All right, y'all, hang on one second. Drop my papers. All right, so next we're going to get into 5.1 support. And I wanted to do these supports because they had a lot of factoring in them and stuff. So all these examples are going to say factor. So for number one, they want me to factor 
10 X squared plus five X. So the first thing you do on factoring, you gotta look and see if you got a greatest common factor. Well, these both have something common, sort of like when we was doing the factor by grouping. So let's see, 10 and 5 both have a 5 in them. And then you got an x squared and an x, so they both at least have an x in them. So 5x would be the greatest common factor between both of these. So now we divide both of these by 5x and put that answer in here. So 10 divided by 5 is 2. x squared divided by x leaves an x. And then we got plus, and y'all look at this, 5x divided by that 5x is 1. So the first thing you look for on factoring, greatest common factor. All right, this one has the R5 plus a 10 R to the fourth. So, well, they both got R's for sure. They don't have no numbers in common, but this one has five R's. This one has four R's. So together, the most they got common are four R's. So you all if you had an R5, divide out of R4, you're basically subtracting exponents. That's going to leave an R plus, well, the 10 didn't get affected, so the 10 comes down. And look at that. The R4 divided by R4 cancel. So we're done. Now, if you check these, R4 times R is R5. R4 times 10 is a 10 R4. So they will check if you redistribute. But when you factor out the greatest common factor, we're undoing the distributive property, okay? So you're going to have a few where you got to do the greatest common factor. Then they're going to hit you with stuff like t squared plus 14t plus 48. So these are trinomials. So these will factor into parentheses. And notice, they didn't have a common factor because this one don't have a T in it. So I don't have to worry about pulling out a greatest common factor. Now, the front is a T squared, so that's got to be a T times a T. Now, focus on this last sign right there. That last sign is positive. So when that's positive, that tells me that both of these factors will be positive like the middle. So positive at the end means they're like signs and they're both going to be like the middle, okay? Now, it tells me two things, remember? Remember, while go to minus told me unlike signs and my factors subtracted to get the middle. But when it's positive, you got like signs and your factors of 48 will add to get 14. Okay? So that tells you whether you're subtracting or adding to get to that middle. So 48 would be 1 and 48, 2 and 24, uh, 3 and 16. What's next? 4 and 12, and then 6 and uh, 8. And that's all the ways to get me a 14. So remember, I need the ones that add. So y'all, that would be what? Uh, oh, 6 and 8, right? The only factor is a 48. That'll add to get a 14. So this would be 49, 26, 19, and 16. But we had a 14, so we needed what? A 6 and 8. And it don't matter where you put them because they're both positive. All right, y'all, that's factored, so now we move on. All right, y'all, here we go. V squared minus 5V plus 6. All right, so there's no greatest common factor because this one don't have a V. 
So we're going to go right into our parentheses. Hey, now remember, y'all, if you can't find factors of 48, go to your Y1 and put in 48 divided by X and then look on your table. That'll give you all these factors, okay? All right here, V squared is a V and a V. Now, the last sign's positive again. So both of these factors will have the same sign as the middle. So y'all, they're both going to be negative. <laughs> now, I need factors of six to be one and six, two and three. Now remember, I don't want factors that subtract to get that five. I want factors that add to get five. And the only factors that will add to get five are two and three. And since both of these are negative, it don't matter where we put our numbers. Okay? So y'all focus on that. Last sign's positive. The factors will both have the same sign as the middle. And you're finding factors of the last number that add to get the middle. All right, let's see. I got a R squared minus 28 minus 3R. So let me tell you this one. There's one thing I'm going to do before I factor this, because if you notice, it's sort of out of order. So we're going to put it in order first by moving the negative 3R and then the negative 28. All right, I noticed there's no greatest common factor. I'm going to go into parentheses. R squared is an R and an R. Now look what I'm going to do. The last number is negative. So these will have unlike signs. No matter what. Now I do know that the larger factor will be negative since the middle was negative. Okay. So your larger factor always has the sign of the middle number. So y'all, what we need to do now, remember, these positives, I found factors that added. This is negative, so I want factors of 28. That'll subtract to give me 3. So you got 1 and 28, 2 and 14. Let's see, 3 don't work. And then I got what? 4 and 7. So the factors over here that are subtracting give you three are going to be seven and four. So remember, seven has to be the negative number, like the middle, because it's larger. And then the four will be the positive. And y'all, these will add up negative seven and four equal negative three. And then when you multiply them, you get your negative 28. So factoring, y'all, is nothing but learning about these signs, okay? All right, so we're going to up to any for number six. They're giving me a 4y squared minus a 16y plus 16. Well, guess what? This one does have a greatest common factor. All three of these numbers will divide by four. So our first step on this one is to factor out that greatest common factor. So four divided by four leaves you one y squared minus 16 divided by four makes that a four y plus 16 divided by four makes that a positive four. So see, we factored out our greatest common factor, but now we got to factor the parentheses. So bring that four down, and then you're going to set up your parentheses. So the y squared is a y and a y. All right, that four is positive at the end. So that positive means both of these factors will be negative like the middle. All right, and I need factors of four. So four is what, a one and a four, two times two. 
Well, the ones that'll add to give me a four are going to be two and two. Oh, you also just factored into four times y minus two times y minus two. So this one, you could write it like that. Or you could do four times y minus two squared. Remember, since these factors match, I can write them using exponents also, okay? All right, y'all, so they had one more on that. Um, so let's see. And you're about, you're about to see why they wanted you to learn on this factoring, okay? So this last one, they got C squared plus 5C minus 14. So notice, there's no common factor because they don't not a C on this one. So we're going to go right into our parentheses. So C squared we know is a C and a C. So y'all, what kind of signs am I putting in here? Both positive, both negative, or one of each? Well, since that's negative, we're going to have unlike signs. One's positive and one's negative. Okay? Now, I also want factors of 14 that'll subtract and give me a 5. The larger number will be positive, and then the smaller number will be negative. So let's think. 14 is either 1 times 14. Well, if you subtract those, you only get a 13. Or 2 times 7. Well, that'll work because 7 minus 2 will give me 5. So 2 and 7 are my numbers. The 7 has to be positive like the middle. And then the 2 will be negative. So 7 and negative 2 equal a positive 5. Those numbers got to add up to give you this exact sign and number as that middle. All right, y'all, so that was uh, let's see, 5.1 support, okay? Now, I will knock out 5.1 college algebra because it's a repeat of what you done did in this class. And it is rational expressions. So to start out, we're going to find numbers that make them undefined. And remember to find numbers that make it undefined, we set the bottom equal to zero. Okay. And then we'll do some where you got to write them as a domain. Okay. All righty, so let's see what they want us. So this is just a repeat of stuff we've already learned. But what they're doing in this section, they'll throw some x squareds under there. So for the first two, you're going to find all numbers for which the rational expression is not uh, defined. Well, that means what makes it undefined? Well, to find that, we set the denominator equal to zero. So the first problem, they're giving me 6c squared minus 10 over 9c plus 25. Now, remember, we don't care about the top. We're only concerned with the denominator. So what we're going to do, we're going to set 9C plus 25 equal to zero. Once we solve that, we will have our C that makes it undefined. 
Now, y'all notice, this is just a C to the first power. So this is only going to give me one answer. So we're going to subtract 25 and then divide by the 9. So I get my 9C is going to equal a negative 25. And then divide by 9. So that cancels, giving me my C equals what? A negative. Uh, well, we can't reduce that or anything. So that'll stay a negative 25 Starts to your over 9. So y'all, the answer will say the rational expression is not defined for C equals. And then you punch in your negative 25 over 9. Your hair will completely change. After adding the water, we will add three tablespoons of corn starch. <laughs> I was getting some kind of recipe on there. All righty. Same thing with this number two. Z squared minus Z minus five over Z squared minus 16Z plus 63. So this one's why we had to do the factoring work in 5.1 support. Because this one has a trinomial with a quadratic Z squared on it. So we need to set Z squared minus 16Z plus 63 equal to zero. And then we got to factor this. Now, all the ones that you're doing in this section, they will definitely factor, okay? So Z squared would be a Z and a Z. All right, I'm focusing on my last sign again. It's positive. So both of these will be negative like the middle number. And then factors of 63, that'll add to get me 16. So if you punch this in your calculator, you would do 63 divided by X on your Y equals. But you would find that that would be a 9 and a 7. So both of them are negative, so it don't matter where I put them. All right, so negative 9, negative 7 equals 63. Negative 9 plus negative 7 equal negative 16. So we got it factored. So remember, we got to solve this now by setting each factor equal to 0. But y'all, we know that the answers will be opposite in sign than the factors, right? So that you get a positive 9 for the first one. And then you're going to get a positive 7 for the second one. So this would be... Uh, the expression is undefined for Z equals 9, comma, 7, okay? So to give you two of these, just so that you'll, uh, I guess, realize that what makes them undefined is the denominators, okay? So once they did that to us, they come in and they said, well, let's find the domain of the function. So we're going to find the domain, and then we're going to write both set builder and interval notation. Now, set builder, they'll give you the first part of it. They'll have the X, such that X is a real number and X not equal to. You just put in the numbers. Interval notations where we'll start at negative infinity, kick out what we got to kick out, and then end up with positive infinity. All right, y'all, so let's see what we got here. The first one I got is F of X equals 5 over 2x minus x squared. 
So the X squared is telling me I got to get two answers on this one to kick out, okay? Remember, single variables like this C, we only had one number. Anytime you got an exponent of two, you got to get two numbers. So we're going to set this equal to zero. Now, if this had three numbers, I would really be rearranging it. But y'all look at this. These got a greatest common factor. So we're going to factor out that greatest common factor. Both of these have an X in them. So I'm going to factor out an X. So 2X divided by X leaves us a 2 minus X squared divided by X leaves you an X. So now I'm just going to set both of these equal to zero. Now remember, there's that GCF variable. Anytime we had a single variable, it always equaled zero. And then we'll set 2 minus x equal to zero and get the other answer. Now I'm going to tell you a trick. You could subtract 2 and then divide by that negative. But y'all, this one has one move to be done. If you would add the x to both sides, this will give you 2 equals x, which is the same as x equals 2. So we got our two numbers. So set builder notation. x such that x is a real number. And x cannot equal. Watch out, they'll use the equals on one of these. But it cannot equal this number. And we got what? 0 and a 2. Now, interval notation. Interval notation will start at negative infinity. Now, you got to kick these numbers out in order. So, zero comes first going left to right. So, you got a union around that zero. And then we go to the two. We got a union around that two. And then it heads towards positive infinity. So, y'all remember to kick out a number, you got a union around it, okay? All righty. So, Set builder notation. They'll give you everything you had to put in the 0 and the 2. Interval notation, you actually got to write it, okay? All righty, so uh, I'm going to do one more of these. So here we go. F of X equals... Uh, whoo, this is big on top. X to the third minus X squared plus a X plus four all over X squared plus 11X plus 28. Now, guess what? We don't care what they put on top. We're worried about the bottom. So this one does have a trinomial. So I'm going to take my x squared plus 11x plus 28, set it equal to zero. Notice there's no greatest common factor. I'm going to go into my parentheses. x squared is an x and an x. All right, that last sign's positive. So that means I got like signs. Both of these will be positive like the middle. And then I want to find factors of 28 that add to get 11. So let's see. We got 1 and 28. That gives me 29. 2 and 14. Those add to get 16. Uh, oh, 4 and 7. 4 times 7. And they add to get 11. So I'm going to put in my 4 and my 7. All right, so now set those equal to zero like we did up here. All 
All right, y'all, let's go to the first one. I'm going to subtract 4. I get x is a negative 4. Second one, I'll subtract 7 and get x is a negative 7. All right, so this one. Now, they want you to use ascending order, so you got to go left to right on this. So you would have x such that x is a real number and x cannot equal blank and x cannot equal blank. So this one, they got to put in the right order. So going left to right, you're going to hit the negative 7 first and then the negative 4. So watch out for that. And if you put negative 4, negative 7, it'll mark it wrong because they want them in ascending order. And I think that's just so you'll get it right on the interval. So the interval notation will start at negative infinity. So you're cruising right until you hit negative 7. So we're going to union around that negative 7. And we're cruising until we hit that negative 4. We're going to union around that negative 4. And then we're cruising until we hit positive infinity. So notice, they all start with negative infinity. They all end with infinity. And we're just unioning around the numbers we are kicking out, okay? All right, y'all, so that's 5-1. It's just really short. So what we're going to do, one more thing, we're going to do 8.5 support. And the reason I did it like this is because it's still factoring. Okay. And y'all, this one only has three problems. So they say simplify. Mr. Rathbone, uh -huh. could you turn your paper back over real quick for me? Okay, okay. For that bottom part right there? Yes. Okay. Okay, thank you. Okay, no problem. Now, these will say simplify by removing factors of one. And I'll show you what they mean by that. Um, so there's three of these. So this first one has 5y minus 30 over 5y plus 30. So y'all, the first thing you got to do is factor these. Now, you've only got two things here. All we can do to both of these is factor out greatest common factors. So let's see on the top, 5 and 30, both of them have a 5 in common. So if we divide the 5 out of the top, 5 divided by 5 leaves you a y minus 30 divided by 5 is 6. Now you got to factor the bottom. Well, same thing. You got the same numbers, so their greatest common factor is a 5. Well, that's going to leave you a y plus 6. So you got to factor out the GCF from top and bottom. Now, removing factors of 1. Well, 5 divided by 5, guess what? 5 divided by 5 is 1. So that's what they're talking about. Cancel out any factors that are common on the top and the bottom. So if we remove that by canceling it out, all that's left is a y minus 6 over 
the y plus 6. Now, y'all, what you cannot do, we cannot cancel out these y's because they're being added and subtracted. You can only cancel out a y minus 6 with another y minus 6. But you cannot cancel out them y's. See, the reason we can cancel out the fives because they was their own factor. So this whole thing is a factor. So the only reason why I can cancel those out, and you'll see in a second, is with the whole factor. So that would be my final answer there. All right, y'all, this one is a P squared minus 25 over P squared minus 10P plus 25. So this one's a new one on y'all, but notice the P squared and the 25, they don't have a common factor. So that top will factor into two sets of parentheses. The P squared will be a P and a P. The last sign's negative. So one of these will be positive, one of these will be negative. And y'all, this is called the difference of perfect squares. So they always factor into conjugate pairs. Remember, one's positive, one's negative. So since there's a zero in the middle for that P, factors of 25, that'll subtract and give me a zero, would be 5 and 5. So if you get a P squared minus 81, you'll get a P plus 9, P minus 9. P squared minus 4, you'll get a P plus 2, P minus 2. These numbers are usually the square root of that last number. So since the square root of 25 is 5, that gave me a 5 and a 5. So this was called the difference of perfect squares, and they always factor into conjugate pairs. Now the bottom, I'm going to set up my parentheses. P squared is a P and a P. But this time the last sign's positive. Since that's positive, both of my factors will have the same sign as the middle. So they'll both be negative. And then I want factors of 25 that add to get 10. That's going to be 5 and 5. So y'all look at that. This P minus 5 cancels with this P minus 5. Now, I can't cancel both of them out because I've already used it once. So since these are unlike signs, my final answer would be the P plus 5 over the P minus 5. So, y'all, that's what they mean. By removing factors of 1, because this P minus 5 divided by P minus 5 basically is 1. So that's really what they're talking about. So y'all, let me do the last one. So this one is a Z squared minus 9Z plus 18 over a Z squared plus 4z minus 21. So both of these are trinomials, so there's no greatest common factor on top, so we're going to factor it out. So z squared is a z and a z. All right, watch this. The last one's positive, so both factors will be negative like the middle number. And my factors will add to get the middle number. So that thing has two purposes. Tells me whether my signs are alike or unlike and whether I'm adding or subtracting. So factors of 18, that'll add to get me a 9. That's what, uh, let's see, 2 and 9 not work. How about 3 and 6? So 3 and 6, since they're both negative, don't matter where I put the numbers. Now, y'all on the bottom one. 
Z squared is a Z and a Z. But check this out. This last one is negative. So no matter what, one will be positive, one will be negative. Now, I need factors of 21 that will subtract to get 4. So, y'all, that's going to be what, uh, 7 and 3. So, 7 and 3, since 7 is a larger number, it'll be positive like the middle, and the 3 will be negative. So, let's see, on top I did what, 6 and 3, and then the bottom was my 7 and 3. All right, so let's see. Something's got it. Oh, look at this. This Z minus 3 cancels with that Z minus 3. So once again, on top, you'll have a Z minus 6 over your bottom, which is a Z plus 7. And then final answer. So this is what I'm talking about when you got these... Uh, Binomial factors, you got to cancel the whole factor out on those, okay? All righty, so, uh, whoo, that's 8.5 support. So what we'll do next class, we'll do 8.5, maybe 8.6, but I might have to, see what happens with that 8.6, um, whether I can actually get it done all the way or not. So I might have to alter stuff a little bit because, oh, y'all, this 8.5 and uh, 8.4, especially 8.4 was pretty long. Okay, so, oh, the moral of the story was a lot of factoring, okay? All right, y'all, so let's see. Uh, All right, so I'm going to stop my share.